Hello there, this is Nopename. Today I want to show you my first um, yeah, usable version of my virtual computer inside Vanilla Minecraft. As you can see, I'm in 1.14 pre-release 2 Vanilla. And this only uses the in-game commands of Minecraft and uh, mainly functions and the execute command, scoreboard commands and the new data modify command. And so yeah, this is the um, program editor of a computer and you can write your own programs and uh, compile them and run them. And But f before I'm going to show you uh, how this works, um, I want to show you something about uh, behind the scenes. So wherefore let's go to... Um, Oops, minus 64, 1, minus 64. And here's a chest, and all the data is stored inside this chest. Or to be more precise, inside this um, item. Because um, the cool thing about items is you can add custom NVT data to it. Uh, you can add whatever you want. And in this case, it's um, all the data I need for this computer. And if I do data get block, um, you can only see a small part of all the data inside this item because yeah, the chat isn't able to display all of it. And yeah, then I'm just using functions to read the data and yeah, run the program and so on. Oops. And now let me show you how to use it properly. Game rules and command block feedback false. Let's open the editor. I'm using these arrows. You can navigate here. And you can see I already wrote a function. Um, if you download this world, um, a link is in the description, you will find a program here that calculates the Fibonacci numbers. I, yeah, I already recorded this video, so I removed it already and wrote a new program. The uh, problem was, um, yeah, there was a bug in the way uh, the call and return functions work here. And I had to fix it and now it should work. So, um, yeah, let's start right from the beginning. I'm going to remove all of this. And let's start a new program. Um, here, if you click on edit, you can... Uh, yeah, see all the commands available. These for if things here, just ignore them. This interface is work in progress and I I will add new commands. So these don't do anything. Um, yeah, for our program to work, we need a function. So let's click on function and we give it a name. Um, let's call it like this. Um, it doesn't need any parameters because this is the first function to be executed by a uh, program. It won't search for a main function or something like that. It will just um, go through the program and the first function it finds, it will run it as the first function. And yeah, now we also need a return thing and just return zero. And that should already work. You could say, so let's compile it. Doesn't find any error here. Um, that's fine. After five seconds, it will send you back to the editor. And now we want to actually do something, of, of course. So, um, we want a variable A, and we want it to be equal to the value of 99. And we want to print it out. So far you can only print out integers. If you click something like here, uh, yeah, just do something and then click on no. That's how you undo uh, changes. So even if you go to this already existing command and you do something you don't want to do, uh, then just click on no if it asks you to save so you don't lose uh, any progress here. Right, so we want to print out variable, oops, A, not Q, A. 
And so let's try to compile it. And we'll say invalid variable name at line 4. That's because we haven't declared the variable A yet, so the computer doesn't know it. Um, you have to declare variables in front of a function. And every function will have its own uh, variables. So just type in the name. That's it. If we compile it, no error. So we can continue. And let's say I want to add another function here. Oops, let's call it test. And this one will have one parameter. And of course we need a return as well. And this time I want to return a certain variable. Let's call it K. And variable names can be up to 10 characters long, by the way. And um, so this is a working function in theory. It doesn't do anything, but um, it will or it should actually give me an error uh, again because yes invalid variable name at line 11 because the computer doesn't know the variable k um, and we have to declare it as well but we have to declare it in front of this function because the variable k only exists inside this function and the variable a only exists inside this function so yeah, that's very important. And of course we want this function to do something as well. Uh, it gets one parameter. And before we can do anything with it, we have to store it. So let's store it in K. And use this equals uh, star A. And it will just get the parameter and store it in the local variable. And then, um, yeah, we take the variable k and add the value 5 or 6 to it, like this. Uh, this command will just take the value of k, add 6 to it and store it in k again. And then the function will return the value of k. And yeah, now we have to actually call that function. So we have to type in the name of the function. Um, yeah, le let's just do something else and no parameters and yeah, that's the wrong very, uh, function name of course and if you run compile it will tell you so invalid function name so it will check if that's correct and now let's call test and without any parameters and now it will tell you that invalid parameter counters at line 6. We need one parameter. And the function is called test and as parameter we want the variable a to be sent to that function. No additional parameters, save. And now everything is fine again. Um, so what this program is doing now is it will um, store the number 99 in the variable a and print it out. Then it will call the function test with the value of a, which is 99, as a parameter. And it will store that value in k and add 6 to it and return the number again. Now we want to do something with the number that is returned of course. And we have to store that in a variable again. Let's store it in b. And to get that number returned by call, you have to click here, equals star return. This will just take the return value and store it in B. Of course, now we have to declare the variable B. By the way, you can add comments. It's just a string, 64, um, 64 characters long. Oh, but it won't display them, so that's a bug, of course. Um, I will change that later. You should be able to see the full comment, of course. Alright, so now we print out a call function, um, get the return value, and now we want to print it out as well, of course. That's a variable b. And now it should print out 99 and 105. 
Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. So that's how you write a program. And yeah, of course you can also add if statements and while statements. Um, let's say, oh wait, um, no, don't save. Uh, first we have to store the parameter, of course. Okay, now we can do actually something with k. If k is unequal to 6, add 6 to it. Um, else um, execute k equals um, k minus 9 and you have to end every if statement with an if and and if you don't do that the compiler will tell you invalid command at line 18 um oops nah. don't keep it add edit um we need an if end here of course and now the program is correct and we can run it again so it since the parameter is 99 which is unequal to 6, it should do the same as before. And it does. But if we set um, a to 6, um, the parameter for this function will also be 6. Um, and then this if statement is false, so it will go to else and um, calculate k, which is 6, minus 9, which is minus 3, and return that instead. And it does. So, everything works. Um, if you find any bug, uh, please tell me. But yeah, so far everything works. And yeah, you can try it out for yourself. Make sure to use these chat settings so this editor actually looks the way it does here. And that's it for this video. I'm planning to make a video in which I explain the basic ideas behind this. Um, I mean, I told you that it's based on functions and data, uh, NBT data, but I will tell you a bit more in detail. I won't explain everything because that would be way too much and way too complicated. But yeah, I will try my best. And yeah, that's it. See you next time. Bye.